Check. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Counterpoint. <laughs> Everybody in diatonic harmony is rolling their eyes. I know. What is counterpoint? I like to describe it as like a family. People who share a last name. They share a household. They share a legacy. They share food and clothes. And yet, my sister would recoil in horror if you said that she was the same person as me. Relative independence. The study of how independent musical lines interact relative to one another. It'll reach a certain kind of culmination when we get to end the Met Symphony. But this is a march that we're about to play for you. What does counterpoint have to do with any of this? I have three quick stories for you that I've been meditating on as we've been preparing this piece for you. First story. When I was working at Dalat International School in Penang, Malaysia, every morning to go into the school, I had to pass a guardhouse, very much like the one you passed coming into this university. Inside that house was a framed letter that the chief guard, Sundaraj, kept on the wall. And it was signed by none other than Jimmy Carter. Thanking Sundaraj for his heartfelt letter of application to immigration to the US, but ultimately denying him a visa. Sundaraj first fell in love with the United States when he found a crate full of flour, sugar, and other necessities airdropped near his home during the Malayan emergency, a time when British colonialism, communism, and democracy fought a bloody war for supremacy. He said as soon as he saw the letters USA stamped across the wood of that crate, he knew that this was a country he could love. He didn't get to immigrate here, but his children did. And he finds fulfillment running the guardhouse of an American international school. Counterpoint. Second story. Less than a kilometer away from that very guardhouse, I unwittingly found myself in a frightening altercation with a member of our neighborhood community. Some of this man's words stick with me to this day, clear as sunshine. Go back where you came from, he demanded of me. Nobody in Malaysia asks for the trouble you Americans bring us. Counterpoint. Third story. In 1934, Lady Macbeth of Matensk premiered in Leningrad, composed by Dmitry Shostakovich. Just over a year later, the Soviet newspaper Pravda condemned Shostakovich for writing muddle instead of music. And the rest of his career would be defined by the anxiety of composing in the shadow of Joseph Stalin. Counterpoint. Jennifer Jolly in this march quotes many melodies. Most are from North Korea, one from South Korea, and one from Dimitri. And it's this interesting melody I want to draw your attention to. It comes from his March for the Soviet Militia, a group also known as the Soviet Police, the footmen of the great Stalinist purge that Shostakovich himself feared becoming subject to. Just take the very first gesture of this melody. Can we play just that bar? Simple enough, right? Can I hear the first, just the first players? Got it? Second players. Third players. So the question is, who has the melody? Because all it is is a triad, right? That's all they're playing, the basic building block of Western tonality. A gesture that is completely equal no matter what part you play. Had anything more communist ever been written? <laughs> and yet, this is, the, the, this is the genius that scholars keep talking about when it comes to Shostakovich. Because the hierarchy is undeniable. Because when you hear the melody, it's clearly in the top voice. The hierarchy 
subversively controls, but only subversively. This is also counterpoint. Later in the work, you're going to hear the South Korean national anthem in four-voice counterpoint, a very different sound to Shostakovich's rigid hierarchy, the pompous grandeur of the North Korean propaganda, and the inhuman warbles of the demilitarized zone. Hopefully it'll give you the same chills that it gives us when we play it, when you finally hear the more democratic writing of the common practice style. Of course, it's easy to point our fingers to the past or to the extreme when it comes to questions of autocracy, imperialism, and control. It's harder to look at ourselves in this counterpoint, to hold in one hand a crate full of flour and sugar, and in the other, someone telling you to go back where you came from. March by Jennifer Jelly.